Michael, congratulations. Good victory, but I'm guessing that before the game you weren't expecting that scoreline. You always expect 6 0, that's what you think of yourself, but no, I was expecting to be a close game then. Just lucky enough, uh, he was decent at scoring, bad at doubles, which is normally my game. And I was bad at scoring, and I did three ton pluses in a row, and it, yeah, he kind of took control of the game then, and yeah, happy with the result in the end, but not happy with the scoring. I said the finishing was up there with, with the very best, and that, you must have ton pluses, obviously they hurt your opponent as well, don't they? Yeah, I knew when I checked the 148, it would have really hurt, especially when he was on 81 after 9, then did he miss 5 darts, I think. And I give up, I think he's seen it with a 60 from 208, I thought, just write his leg off, he free one up. Your dart, uh, no, his darts, just put the put the pressure on him, see what you can do. He missed again in the SA for this a killing this. And then I went ton one forty, ton one six one hour for it. Yeah, he's definitely gone now. And it's the way darts goes at the end of the day. Like the them shots like they're like three out of ten, four out of ten at best and they do work at the end of the day. Where is the Michael Smith game right now? Because we've seen a frustrated you on the <laughs> tour. We've seen we've seen smiles. We've we've, we've seen frowns. We've seen just about everything in the last month from you. I think if you see smiles, that's when you see the frustration. I'm laughing because I want to kick off. <laughs> that's the thing, and that's why I've got like scars here now in my head and cuts and everything. I'm literally digging darts in my head. It's one of them that happens. But my game at the minute is my own fault from when I won the world, taking virtually nearly a full year out apart from stage events and. Yeah, paying the price. But my game, for me, the way I'm practicing at the minute, I feel like it's back to where it was. It's back at the best. It's just not showing it on stage at the minute. And who knows? It could be this weekend. It could be next week in the Grand Slam, or it could be in the players. Or best of all, it could be at the World. I know the. I know it's there. I know it's coming. It's just doubles let me down. Where doubles pull me out the out the mud tonight. But it's just that one thing let me down at the minute. I'm sure you're obviously aware that it's a big period for you coming up defending a King's Ransom on those rankings, <laughs> is that something that, that you think about? Not at all, if if, if I uh, lose first round of everything, I lose first round of everything. You can't take 22 and 23 away from me, that's one thing you can't do. Yeah, you take my money off my ranking but I don't lose the titles as well, so I, I really do not give. Yeah, <laughs> one of them I'm not bothered, is if I fall down the rankings I know next year I've got nothing to defend because I took a year out. So I can get myself back up to where I need to be, and where I need to be is number one, and I know I can do it. But as for now, I really don't care what I'm doing. If I can put some good runs in, so like this this weekend, if I can make a semis or maybe a final, I take a chunk out of what I'm defending. Uh, players champs, I'm defending first round, so if I can go on have a good run there, I'm taking a chunk out of the Grand Slam. It, it really doesn't matter what I'm doing though. Michael, Cheers, Paul. Thank you. Michael, it was really towards the final few events of the European Tour that you confirmed your place here. Now, I know that you've pulled out a few European Tour events, but was there a frustration there that it did take that long to get here? No, um, I think it might have been European 8 or 9 somewhere, and I made the semi-finals and said to the kids, like, listen, I'm qualified now, I'll just turn up now, win one game, and I'm definitely in. And I just took even more time off, where I wanted to spend time with the kids after coming back from Australia and New Zealand, we went to Mexico and then I literally from the match player, well not sorry from the match player, from um, Australia I took a month out, I come back on maybe September the 17th, 18th, round about my birthday when I come back and I wasn't stressed or fussed or whatsoever, I knew what my game involves, I know what it takes and I know I can win a match. So I was ne- once I made that semi-finals, in, I think it was Austria, it was somewhere, you'd have to check, but once I made that I knew I'd qualified, it was just one win and that's all I needed so I never stressed over it. We spoke to Ryan Searle earlier. He was talking about how, how tough it can be to to be away from home to compete in these darts events. Is it getting harder and harder each year to, to find the, the right balance between competing and getting that ranking winner, but also having that, that family life and being a father and husband? This is my... I'm just coming up to my 17th year with the PDC. It, it's been hard since day one, and day one I was only playing UK, uh, the UK. So, uh, yeah, it's been hard, but listen... I could play every single day on moan, I'm playing too much, and I could be playing one day a week and I'd be moaning I'm not playing too much. It's you find that fine balance where you want a month off, but you have the month off and then you're moaning because you're spending too much time with the kids. And you know how it is if you've got kids after a week with them and they're like this and you leave, ah, please just take me away. Matt, please, Matt, I'll bury her and put something on so I can go away. It's one of them, it happens. You're always going to moan, you're never going to please everyone. And listen, I'm only 34, probably got another 12. 11, 12, 13, hopefully a lot longer, but looking forward to that one. 
And next up, Richie Ed House. He averaged nearly 110 tonight. He's averaged 120 only a few weeks ago. Are you aware of the performances that he's been putting in? It's been a real breakout year for him this year. No, he's, he's going to go sleep tonight, wake up tomorrow, it's a new day. And I'm going to do the same. It doesn't matter how good he played or how bad I played. It's a new day come Saturday and that's all I'm thinking about. He, he's got three darts, I've got three. And whatever it happens, and yeah, it goes from that. But fair play to him, he's playing well. I'm not playing too bad. I, I know where my game should be and it's not quite where it is, but I'm still winning matches, I'm still making semis and major finals. And yeah, I've won one this year with uh, Humphreys in the World Cup. So it's not, it's not been too bad. Cheers, Michael. Thank you. Oh, you're welcome. welcome. Michael, 6-0 win. We've got three big out shots, but how difficult was that game for you tonight? Uh, yeah, if you watch the game, it wasn't easier, especially with scoring. If you look online and see 6-0, it looks easier. So uh, it's, it's different. It depends how you look at the game. It's, it was difficult to play in, especially playing probably the best friend I've got in darts. I grew up with Chizzy before he even became professional. I've known him since I was 13 years old. So I've known him for a good 21 years, so it is hard to play him, but at the end of the day, someone has to win, and I'm not going to let him win, he has to win. It's all up, for, it's all up and down for you this season, um, but what stands out for you? What have been the highlights in 2024? Uh, nothing just yet. Yeah. I have the World Cup that time, but I want to say ups and downs, I've been trying. There's no, yes, Pro Tours and Europeans haven't been great, but I like to play on stage, I like to do everything on stage. Made the semis of the Premier League, semis of the match player, won the World Cup, uh, final of the World Series. So if you look at my TV form, I've been one of the, the best players on TV. I've just had two slack tournaments at the UK Open and the Grand Prix. And yeah, I've been I've been happy with my game on TV, disappointed the game away from TV. But is it, is it just sometimes when you just maybe see those players like, well, Luke Humphreys or... Wittler, Mike De Decker winning those those big things and maybe sitting at home and thinking, well, I I, I should be there. I, mean, I spent 10 years sitting at home watching Phil Taylor win everything. <laughs> it really doesn't bother me. As long as I'm picking up titles whenever I do, and if I win one a year, I'm not happy, but I'm happy that I've won something. And it, it happens. It, listen, Humphreys is probably the best player we've seen for a long time. He's taken over that mantle. I've watched Van Gerwen for the last eight, nine years. I've been smashed off him in so many finals. Taylor's the same. It happens. I'm, I'm not going to sit at home because I'm not a jealous person. If they win it, they win it. Fair play to him. I'm just going to make sure the next tournament I come, I'm going to make sure they, they have to win it where I push them to the limits and that's all to keep telling myself. I'd never be jealous. just makes me more hungrier to yeah, work as hard as I can. Just right now, do you think you would deserve a spot in the Premier League? That's not for now. I'll ask me again at the World Championships. Um, that's a question you need to ask in two, three months. Just not right now. Okay. If you ask it now, of course, yes, because I'm world number two. Top four, where they get in? So ask again at the World Championships. Thank you. No, you're, you're welcome, Paul.